Well, welcome back. We are on another project. We're over at my daughter's home up in one of her rooms and she wants to install a, a sort of an entertainment wall, I guess it is. And uh, she's got a picture of what she'd like to see done. And that's a wall. It's got a built-in fireplace and it's got a recessed flat screen TV. So she has the TV. We're just going to move the one from downstairs upstairs. And, but she bought the fireplace and this is the fireplace right there it's about a 36 inch by 18 inch um, flush mount fireplace and it took a bit of a challenge to figure out how to get the glass off because you have to remove the glass to get the anchors inside the box in order to, to anchor it in your recessed wall and what we're going to do in this corner here if i can back up far enough we're going to put a 45 degree wall build a framed wall sheet rocket and whatnot and it'll just be about a 60 inch wide wall Going from there over to there at a 45 degree angle, we'll recess the fireplace on the lower half of it and put the TV up higher. But the brand of this TV is what again, Michelle? The Delio Ultra Thin Silence Linear Wall Mounted Electric Fireplace. <laughs> from Wafer, it looks nice. That's a bigger one. This is only 36 inch one. But um, it'll work. So the manual was not real clear. It kept talking about removing the lower left screw, then lift up and remove the glass. Well, we removed almost all the screws and nothing seemed to work. And if you look at the instructions, they sort of show these two little recesses here, one on each side. Then they show a screw, but inside there, inside there, there is a Phillips screw and there is another Phillips screw on this side in here you've got to pull those two two screws out um, a stubby screwdriver would be a bugger so i sort of rigged up a an extension of my magnetics and i know that's not something that everybody's going to be have going to have but this is a magnetic screwdriver i had a magnetic extension a couple of them then i end up with the phillips on it so when they were all together it was pretty wobbly which helped it get into that hole in order to get the the tip onto the head of the screw but it did pull those two screws out and once you pull those two screws out you can lift up on the glass and it and it came right off so i know that's uh, going to help hopefully a lot of people that buy this thing because it was pretty confusing to us so we'll um we'll keep moving on and probably start with the wiring because i got to get power from there through and into this wall to a couple outlets for the TV in the fireplace. And I figured I'd show you what you find. Once you pull these two screws out, you lift up on the glass and it comes off and it's got a little wiring harness here. You're supposed to press that button to disconnect it. It's got these two hooks here and they, they hook onto these studs on the fireplace. So once you pull, you know, like I said, you're getting your, your screwdriver in, you're hitting a screw there that's going into that hole there. So you've got to pull these two screws out here. And once the screws are loose, you just lift up on the glass and it comes off. Disconnect your, your harness. Well, I'll put my eyes on and I'll be able to see that better. But yeah, that only took an hour. <laughs> we'll see how the rest of the project goes. So on that wiring harness, it's got a little tab. I want to press that tab down and that disconnects your harness. So I brought my little laser out just to give us a better idea of the wall placement. And I use a little, it's called a PLS2. And they're pretty inexpensive. I think you can find them at Amazon. But I will put a link down below. But this just gives myself and my daughter a better idea, a better idea at least of where the wall is going, how it is in relation to her, her recessed ceiling up here. We didn't want to, of course, encroach over that. And we missed that by a bit. And it gives her a nice wide access to her, her bathroom there. So I think that, that looks good. Gives me a line to measure to now and start cutting some wood and building this thing. All right. So you need to be right on that. So I'm going to ask you one more time before I get ready if you're right on that little mark. So I'm going to snap it. And it's going to leave a blue line, hopefully. 
So I figured I'd give you a little update. This is uh, day two on this project. The angle was kicking my butt. And the the depth that I needed to frame for this thing, it um, almost didn't have enough room for it. My, um, my control was that up there. I couldn't really come out past that. And I really need to, but that was about as far as I could come out. And uh, my main issue was the depth that I needed for the recess for the, the screen. I needed six inches, actually six and a half. And I got about six, but we'll make that work with the outside trim. Um, I think it'll work out. I got the backing that I needed. Had to rip these little boards here to give me more backing. And this is the, the wood that we're gonna be using. It's just a, <clears throat> Oh, it's like a tongue and groove. Um, they make it in a beadboard, this, but this is the flat finish. And it's just a little tongue and groove that you'll pin nail it on. But I think it'll look good. She wants it all stained, sort of a dark oak red looking stain, I believe. But, um, but yeah, it's almost there. Had to rip these boards, get them on plane with the wall. So that was fun. Now I've got the lower half to uh, frame up for the fireplace. And I think we'll start hanging sheetrock and staining that, um, that wood trim. See if we can't get some of that up. But it's progressing slowly, but, but surely. So I finished up framing for the fireplace. I was able to use a bunch of scrap wood. I demoed from my dad's old workbench. So that was sort of cool. Got to recycle it all. But um, it's it's ready for sheetrock. I have no more cutting or nailing to do to it. I uh, test fit the, the uh, fireplace and it does fit. So that's a good thing. And let's hope the TV fits. So that's it for tonight. Got it sheetrocked. A little bit of mud. Don't need a bunch of mud. The tile that goes on it. It doesn't really need mud behind it. Um, it does need some primer, though, so I'll have to bring some primer back, primer the, the board. The reason I used green was that's all Home Depot had. They were out of regular sheetrock, so they, they sold me the green stuff, same price. So that'll be it for tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll get some, some tile and some wood up this week, and we'll, we'll watch how that goes up. Welcome back. We're going to be installing a sort of a wall accent tile material that uh, is made of PVC. Uh, the product is called um, Palisades. There's an another manufacturer my daughter was looking at called Duma Wall, but we ended up getting Palisades. It's a waterproof, grout free wall tiles. Um, the type she got was marble, but they got several different types you can choose from. 100% waterproof, easy one day project. Uh, interlocks together, they got other um, termination angle brackets you can purchase, but uh, we didn't bother with those. It can be used in a bathroom. Most of the projects that I've seen are done in bathrooms, but this is not gonna be a wet condition, so uh, we don't have to worry about caulking it and sealing it from water. But it's just got a um, an interlock tongue and groove type that you interlock together. Tiles are about 11 and an eighth by 23 and a quarter. And you can stack them on top of each other or stagger them. We're gonna stagger them going up this wall. We haven't got a very big wall. It's about 60 inches wide, eight feet tall. She's got a recess for her TV. 
and all that's going to be trimmed out with wood and then she's got a fireplace down there that we're going to put in so just the tile is going on the exposed sheetrock and we've got a little trim piece that we're going to use at the walls here and this is actually from uh, an rv supply store it's just a little wood trim with uh, paper wrapped over it. we're going to paint it white to sort of match the tile and then it will just trim out against the wall it's very flat very low profile so i think it'll look good once we paint it up and that'll go up the jams across head so we'll get started with that first row get that on and see how quickly this goes up so i started with a, a layout line i got a level line going across there and i got a center line that's going all the way up the center of the wall and the tiles are they're 11 and an eighth inch tall when you do them horizontally so i went ahead and laid out on a stick here i just drew a pencil line 11 and, and one eighth layout a little pencil line because i want to know where each tile or each grout joint would would lay out in relation to this cut out in the wall here along with the fireplace and it ended up that um, we can almost go well we can go with a full piece tile at the bottom we'll hold up about an inch and that'll give me the layout that i want for the openings for the grout joints as i go up the wall i didn't want them all goofy and cattywampus where it didn't look very good. So a little bit of layout with that stick and that answered it for me. I was hoping that this tongue on the top here would be longer and I'd be able to use that. I have a little DeWalt pin nailer that I'll, um, I've used for woodworking. And I was hoping I was gonna be able to use that just to pin it through the tongue, but um, it's just not tall enough. So we're gonna have to go ahead and glue it and what the manufacturer recommends is uh, that's a Loctite Power Grip product. So we'll um, glue this first one on and I think I'm going to go ahead and pin the bottom of it. That way it'll, I don't have to wait for it to be set up or I don't have to put a ledger on the bottom to support the weight of the tiles. So I'll go ahead and pin it. I've got studs laid out. I know where the studs are. and. Um, that way it'll hold the weight of the tile as I go up the wall. A little center line on the tile, just tell me where to start. And I am going to have to trim this. I thought I had enough. So I've got a number of cuts that I want to be doing, notching and whatnot, especially around these openings. Uh, so I'm going to use my little skill saw down out in the garage. I'm not sure how you cut notches in this other than using a saw. And then these two end cuts here, I've got one at 11. The one over there is 11 and an eighth. Um, I'll be able to use one tile, splitting it in half and using it on either end so i'll take that piece down and cut that too um, got the the last one on the the bottom row there i've got to strip a quarter inch off and i think it's easier using the saw so um this one here i did cut just see how it, it did with the saw it cut fine it's, it's dirty it's gonna fling a lot of plastic shavings but uh, it's a pretty clean straight cut i cut it backwards i don't know if i needed to but that way i'm not dragging the saw against the uh, the surface of the marble. Cut it from the backside and hopefully protect the, the finish on it. 
So we'll take these pieces down, cut them up, and get them back up on the wall. I've got a little four and a quarter inch Makita trim saw I've had for years. It's, it's real lightweight. It's easy and maneuverable. You could use a table saw. You could use a full-size skill saw, jigsaw. Um, with this small of a cut, that's about a half inch. I might try it when I'm further down on the, the line as far as getting tiles on the wall to see how easy a half inch breaks, but I just think the smaller cuts will be easier with this skill saw. Watch your ears. Makes a nice clean cut. No burrs. So I like that. This is one of the notch ones. It's just plastic, so it cuts pretty easy. I'm going to cut me a little tapping block. See what I need. When I need it, I'll come back down and cut it. It'll help tap it a little bit because it's pretty snug. Once you snap them in, they'll move, but you got to tap on them. And I don't want to risk damaging the, the face of it. So head back up and put them on. Remember which one went where. Sort of like Legos, once you get going.
just push it into the wall. So I figured I'd try using the utility knife since that's how they recommend this stuff being cut. Um, I almost prefer the saw. This just seems... Seems more labor intense. But we'll see. Ten scribes. Let's see if that. Yeah, it cuts it. It's pretty straight. So I've got a cut here. Most of these are going to be about a half inch. I've got what's going to probably help is a they call these duckbill vice grips. Got a wide grip on it. And, uh, I know that's something that most of you would not have in your toolbox, but I think it's going to help cut this thing. So I'm going about ten scores. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how you would break a small piece, especially something like a quarter inch here. I mean, it does break it, but you need a set of duck bills to break it or just do it on a saw. Especially if you got a knot, you know, like that. Noisier, messier, and easier. So you got options. So it's the next day. I figured I'd show you how it turned out. Actually, I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's good looking stuff for what it is. I mean, it's just 516 PVC or plastic. And it's got really good joints. If I can focus on that. I mean, it's barely a 16th. And they're all tight. So if you uh, start off nice and level, it it just sort of goes up the wall. It look good for a little accent wall. So today I'll start with the wood on this upper opening here. Really the bottom opening is, is done. We just set the fireplace into it, plug it in, and start playing with it. 
but I'll I'll start getting all the tongue and groove pine that we stained red oak it looks pretty good and I'll show you how that goes so I'm set up out here in her garage I've got my little Makita eight and a quarter inch table saw works really good for this kind of work got a little 10 inch Hitachi uh, I think it's a 40 tooth blade on it just a little bench to set the wood on and these are the um, the samples that we went with I think we had six different colors that we chose from and she ended up going with the red oak which is that one here so we got them all stained up I don't have the finish on it I think I'm gonna go I think I'm going shellac as opposed to polyurethane but I'm real happy with the the pine stained with red oak put uh, two coats on it and it looks really nice I like it trimmed it out with some RV trim that I painted white reused her base and I got to cock up and sand her uh, splice there and then I've got an exterior trim it's gonna picture frame this up here it'll go all the way around it sort of give it a nice picture frame look she had a vision she showed it to me and um, I think it it's a win I'll finish it up and show you one one last look and we'll move on to the next one I am done with this one it turned out pretty nice she's very happy with it so she's been looking for this for many many years and I gotta say it looks really good finished out real nice have some touch-up paint on the splice there I'll probably repaint the whole base fireplace is cool and we put these LED backlights which are it looks really nice at night but thanks for hanging out it was a it was a fun project a lot to it a lot more than I thought there would be move on to the next project which is downstairs see you in a bit Can I do it? <laughs> sure so this is our next project we're gonna marble over that faux brick and my girl, little granddaughter is going to help me. But this one should go quick. Real quick. Told you that would be a lot easier than the first time. Turned out real nice. Pretty easy. See you in the next one.